Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Amen. It's great to be back at POLC. It's been a, uh, a, a great week. Um, a lot of us men were able to go to men's conference, and uh, we had such an incredible time together, great time of fellowship. Very grateful for the opportunity, amen, to have our men. We had 11 of our men that went. And uh, so, Brother Cody, we put him to work. He was our cook. And uh, Brother Cody, he fried up some uh, fish and hush puppies and fries. And, and we had coleslaw. And my goodness, we just had a great time. And uh, so very grateful and thankful for all the men. But most of all, I'm grateful that we were able to be in the presence of the Lord. Uh, God truly moved. Uh, in every service, in every service, God had a direct word uh, for the men. And I'm grateful that uh, I was a part of Men's Conference 2021. And, um, you know, one of the things I've learned is that I don't never want to take for granted because we don't have a clue if there will be another Men's Conference 2022. So I want to make sure that I get all that I can and extract everything that I can out of any opportunity to be in God's presence. Uh, we've been talking about the title. Anybody remember the title? The God That Never Changes. You should have that by now. Uh, this is the eighth week that, uh, that we will dive back into this this morning. But we do serve a God that never changes. Sometimes it might not be a, an excitement of hearing that God never changes. But when you come to the reality that if God did it back then, God will do it today. Amen. That is what brings us such great joy and peace knowing that God is a more than able God, that if he did it for Abraham, if he did it for Moses, if God saw that one man was a righteous man by the name of Noah, that he found grace in the eyes of the Lord, I'm grateful that in 2021 he's still looking for some people that he can have grace upon and that we too can be used to save our family, and those around us. Amen. Amen. In Genesis chapter nine, 3 and verse 9, we left all talking about one of the things that never changes is not just is God never changes, but His Word never changes. We talked about last week, and I ended it off on about when G, and then the Lord called unto Abraham and said unto him, Where are you? We talked about last night, if he's an omnipresent God, he knows all things, he sees all things, then why in the world was God saying, where are you, Adam? Do you agree with Pastor this morning that God knew where he was? Amen. I don't think that none of us can hide anything that God does not see or not aware of whenever we... Um, walking through life. God from the beginning has always required one thing, and that is confession for the wrong that has been done, sin that has been committed. God always gives us a opportunity uh, to make things right with him. Amen. If God did it for Abraham, if God did it for Peter, if God did it for these others, then God still gives you and I because he's the God that never changes, he still is a merciful, kind, loving God that will give you and I a chance to make things right. I don't know about you, but ever since the beginning of time, it has been the enemy's um, uh, goal and ambition to separate humanity from its creator. Amen. But I'm grateful that God knows where you and I are and he gives us the opportunity to make things right. I said this last week. Uh, you cannot conceal, hide, cover any sin, no matter what type of sin. 
Amen. Because, you know, we, as humanity, we categorize sin these days. And we can look across the aisle and say, but, yeah, but I didn't do what he did. Or I didn't say what she said. Or I, I, I you know, really, I mean, And we want to categorize the different things of what sin is. Can I just settle the thing? Anything that is not of God Amen. needs to be repented over. Amen. Amen. David gives us a very clear understanding how God knows everything. If God never changes, his word never changes, his principles never changes, his principles never change, then we find that uh, his mercy and his grace is always still the same. We find here in scripture, David says, um, I, I got to be careful because God does know all things. He sees all things. And David gives you and I a revelation through the scripture. And he says in, in Psalms 139 and 7 through 18, he says, whether shall I go from thy spirit? Brothers and sisters today, if we know and understand that we serve a God that never changes, then and that his spirit, you can't go anywhere where he is not. It might want to make you and I uh, just a little bit more cautious on certain things that I do and certain things that I say and certain things that might be questionable. Here's one thing I've always just, you know, everybody says, well, you know, it's a gray area. How many of y'all believe we should never live in a gray area in our walk and relationship with God? If it could be, the best thing to do is get away from it. Don't do it. Don't say it. Don't go there. Don't, don't touch it. Because he said, where can I go from thy spirit? There's nowhere that I can go. Whether I shall, shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shalt thou name, thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me. And this one right here, brothers and sisters, when we think uh, that uh, I'll just wait until the cover of the night. I'll just make sure that whatever I do or could be a gray area or a questionable moment. I'll just wait to do it at night because at nighttime, if, if, if you can't see me, then you'll never know that I did it. Or we can look back in the scripture and David says, where can I go where you are not? I love it because David didn't just leave us hanging about when he said, surely the darkness shall cover me. I can cover in the darkness. How many of you know, how many of you get, get, realize that at nighttime things get a little more intense in the spiritual realm? Because it's in the cover of the night, it's the darkness where the enemy sometimes he lingers and and you listen, you you'll walk through a graveyard as long as it's daylight. But if it's at nighttime, you'll run through it, but you ain't gonna walk through it. Why? Because there's something about the cover of the dark that sometimes the enemy wants to try to conceal. Or get you to conceal some things in the night. But he had, but 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 look what David said. Even the night shall be light about me. God, there's nothing that I can do. There's nothing that I can hide. Because you're the same God. And it doesn't matter either, either it's done in the day or the night. The night is the same as the day to you. Even the things that I do in secret. You're still seeing it. Right. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light both are alike to thee. Now, you can take that either way, amen, because it's it's talking about 
what could separate us from the love of God? What are those things that could be considered a gray area or sin a possible way? But I also want to encourage you this morning that it doesn't matter when the devil attacks, by day or night, God sees everything that the enemy is trying to do. I don't care what time of the night, it might be midnight. But ask Paul and Silas if God is not present in the midnight. It, it, it might be in the early morning hours when everybody else is asleep and all of a sudden your eyes pop wide open because you feel something's in the room. Uh, hallelujah. The devil would try to hide in the cover of the night. But I come to tell you today that same God who protected all those that were before you and I is the same God standing watch over you even at night. I'm excited because the devil cannot even hide in the dark. Right. This makes it very clear why we should never try to conceal, hide, lie about anything, amen, that could be questionable in our walk and relationship with God. Confess and make things right. Amen. While in my study, I asked the Lord, and, and I did this yesterday, in my study, I asked the Lord, why has he kept me in this vein that I've been speaking in the, in the past few Sundays. I felt like God spoke to me the way that he does. And he said, because I desire to send a great revival. Yeah. But there's some hidden things that must be removed. Yeah. Then God brought me to Joshua chapter 7 after he began to show and reveal that to me. And I feel very strongly that God truly said those things into my spirit yesterday because God really is wanting and desiring. Is it not God's plan to save every living and breathing being on the face of this earth and of humanity? Do you believe that Jesus Christ came, died on the cross, resurrected from the dead, is so that just some people can be saved. I believe with all of my heart, Jesus came to save all humanity. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. I don't think that you and I are some privileged people who God just said, well, I like you more than I like Joe Blow down the street. I'm grateful that God has put you and I here so that we can be the extension of Christ and that we can save the lost. But he said, in order for the revival to have its free course, to flow into the avenues in which I designed it and planned it from the very creation of time, he said, there are some things uh, that we have to deal with and get rid of. Here's what God brought me into Joshua. This was nowhere in my notes last week. This only happened just yesterday. And Joshua takes... God takes me to Joshua chapter 7. Most of us know this particular chapter. It was the sin of Achan. God had sent a great victory. He had just given the children of Israel a great and mighty victory over Jericho. Jericho was defeated without pulling one sword. Jericho did not have to go through a point where one soul was lost. Not one person had to go into the firmity to get repaired and get stitched up because of the heat of a battle. Jericho was won simply because the God, amen, that spoke into Joshua and gave him direct, specific instructions. All I want you to do, Joshua, he said, I want you to defeat this particular wall city, but I want you to defeat it in worship. Amen. Worship and praise will always tear down whatever opposition Amen. that is standing between you and your promise. Amen. The only thing, amen, that Jericho represented, it was an obstacle between the promise and them. Amen. You and I are standing here today, whether you realize it or not, but there is a promise that stands before you and I. And there's an obstacle that stands in between you and I. But I can encourage you today that if you will wake up your worship 
and you would wake up your praise in this building today. I believe that there will be some walls that will fall. You will not have to pull your sword. You will not have to get into hand-to-hand -hand contact if you would just begin to worship and praise because the same God that never changed that showed up on the walls of Jericho that day is the same God that's right here, right now in this building because I feel the same God that Joshua felt. I feel him in this building this morning oh hallelujah thankful that we serve a God that what he did then he will and shall do it again we must amen begin to realize and understand that God gives us victories of the yesterday's amen battles and if we're not careful the yesterday battles will become just a memory Amen. Because we are fighting not just what was in our past, but there's some things in our future. And we find that we find where uh, God begins to give them great victory and without one soul being lost, not one sword being pulled from his uh, sheave. And we find that it was just praise and worship. Amen. As they begin to sing their songs and blow their trumpet. Amen. Sometimes I think we just need to hold our peace when the enemy is taunting us from the wall. Amen. 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 I know it looks foolish. And the weapons of our warfare, warfare they are not carnal, but they're mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. It doesn't look... Do you know how many people were making fun of them? What is these foolish... Israelites doing walking around the uh, walking around these walls, and all they got is a trumpet. All they got is a bullhorn. I don't see none of them carrying a sword. I don't see none of them trying with a battering ram to tear down the wall to get to where we are. Just hold on. Let them let them let them make their threats. Let them make their their little uh, their little funny uh, uh, jokes, and let them say just just. Just keep walking. Just keep praising. Because there's coming a moment, there's coming a day, because God has the oh Lord, the God that never changes. Listen to me. If God is the God that never changes, when he told Joshua, just do this all for seven days, and on the seventh day, do seven laps. How did God know what was going to happen? Because God was already seven days in advance before they even got there. God had already saw past the seventh lap and he knew exactly what was going on. I wonder how many times God has given you and I a word and said, you just do this. Because if you'll just do this, I already see the end and I know what's going to happen. Amen. But our problem is, is that we get into a situation and we start questioning that God that never changes. Uh, amen. Yeah, he did it for Joshua, but I don't know if he can tear down this current wall in 2021. Oh, God help us. We find that from the walls of Jericho, there was only but one lady who survived in her household. God only allowed mercy to Rahab and all that were in her house. You see, friends, listen to pastor. You have to have things in your house right. You have to make sure that you get them in your house and you cannot let them have, you cannot let them be in the world. The spy said that if you'll just go get your family if you'll go get those that are close to you, put, get them in the house. It's those that are in the house when the walls start to shake and the earth begins to tremble. It's whoever's in the house. They're the one, going to be the ones that's going to be saved. Somebody needs to get a hold of that today. Amen. You need to get some lost people, some lost family members and get them in the house. But Pastor, I, I, you just don't know. I've asked 526,000 times. Just keep asking. Just keep moving. Just keep, amen, being persistent. And, uh, simply because obedience, listen to this, 
simply because obedience of a sinner saved her whole entire household. Come on, somebody. You, you, you have to understand, we serve in a God, amen, that does honor his word. Amen. And listen, it wasn't God, amen, that said to Rahab, if you'll just do what I tell you, then and you save those two men, and, and you hang that scarlet thread out that window, then I, I, I'll, I'll make sure you're okay. No, that was men of God sent to be spies in there, and there were men of God who said, Rahab, we're going to make sure your household and whoever's in your house will be saved. Oh, God, help us today to understand God honors the, 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 the words that we say when we are in covenant with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Rahab, amen, was able to save her whole household whole household remember everybody that lived in the center in that city everyone whether whatever age was killed in this uh in this uh crumbling of the wall or city of jericho except for the obedience of one sinner one sinner saved her whole household obedience will get god's attention right the word of the Lord says obedience is better than sacrifice. sacrifice. God, help us to be in obedience to the God that never changes. Amen. But what I'm about to share with you uh, is the disobedience of one saint affected the whole tribe of Israel. One sinner, one sinner was able to save a whole household. But a one saint messed up a whole tribe of Israel. God had just given orders in chapter 6 and 18, and here's what he said. This is prior to the walls falling. And you, by all means, sustain from the accursed thing. Lest you become accursed uh, when you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. The excitement was still being separated from the walls of Jericho falling. The next assignment was now given because you see, brothers and sisters, whether you realize it or not, we're going to have to keep fighting until you step through those pearly gates. This one saved, always saved. I'm sorry. Pastor just, just struggles with that because I don't think it's a one-time battle. You're going to have to keep fighting the good fight of faith. Uh, you're going to have to just keep getting up and pull, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And, and you're going to have to put on the whole armor of God every single day. And you're going to have to walk out in a world that's trying its very best to separate you from the love of God. That's trying to separate you from your promise. Uh, as bad as you want to get to your promise, there's an adversary that is just as much amen, against you getting there than you trying to get there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And he tells them, he said, he, Joshua tells them, the Lord said, don't take anything of the accursed thing. Because if you do, it's going to affect more than what you realize. <laughs> they find where they are celebrating the walls of Jericho, not one person lost, not one person, amen, that had to uh, loss of life. And then he says, I want you to go to Ai and see what is needed to defeat the men of the city. Be careful. Amen, brothers and sisters. And I'm talking to pastor this morning. Amen. We must be very careful what, 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 what we fought with in this battle. Be careful we don't change the strategy for the next one. <laughs> if it took praise and worship 
And the last one is going to take some praise and worship in this one. Amen. Hallelujah. The same thing that worked then, it'll work now. Amen. Because we serve the same God that was with Joshua. He's the same God that's with us right now. Amen. Amen. I'm grateful that God never changes. Amen. So he tells them, I want you to go to Ai and see what's needed to defeat the city. And they came back and they said... Uh, he said, you know, Joshua, this is going to be a piece of cake. You know what? Matter of fact, don't even send the whole tribe of Judah. Don't, we don't, all we need is about two to 3,000 men, and uh, we'll be able to take care of them. Because that's, that's just a little, that's a cakewalk. These, these guys, they don't even know how to even fight. They don't have the wall cities that we just, uh, that God just gave us victory. And I'm sure God will give us victory here. But something that happened between, amen, the walls falling in Jericho and walking into Ai, somebody by the name of Achan saw something that attracted him. We just destroyed a whole wall city, and these people, they don't have anything like the walls of Jericho. And something began to transition because somebody thought that they had something concealed and they thought that they had a head, and they thought that through the cover of the night, nobody saw it, not even God. They begin to attack the city with their 3,000 men. And the Bible says that 36 men, that's 36 husbands, that's 36 dads that lost their life simply because of a concealed sin of somebody in the camp. One man had something concealed in his house. Church, you hear pastor. We better check to see what's in our house. If a sinner can be obedience in her house and save her house. But yet a saint, a worshiper, a God person could conceal something in the house and lose the whole house. I hope this, amen, makes sense what pastor's telling you today. I'm just giving you what the Lord spoke to me yesterday. 36 men loses their life that day because of a man's concealed sin. He had in his house, amen, something that was hid. It may not just affect, amen, the person who took the garment. Be careful because it may affect the ones who are the closest to you. Joshua 7.10. So the Lord said to Joshua, Joshua was now on the ground. He was... He was having a pity party and he couldn't understand why in the world did we just have this great victory, but now, amen, now we have loss of life and it's fewer people. It was an easier task. And Joshua was down on the ground and he's, he's having his pity party. He said, why didn't you just leave us on the other side if you were going to do this? We could have just stayed on the other side and not even have to come over here. And he's having his little complaining party and God looks at him and he said to the Lord said to Joshua get up amen sometimes we need to quit mother grubbing about things and find out where's the problem don't be blaming God and find out okay where's it at if victory's not happening in your life you better start finding out where is it hidden I, I, listen, I, I, I'm not trying to teach this morning, not preach, but I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost yeah. to tell you that if there's not some things changing in your life, there needs to be a search uh, and find out did something come in unaware? Yeah. Did a little small fox get through the crack? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Get up, Joshua. Why do you lie this on your face? It's a simple answer, Joshua. It's as simple as just doing an investigation. So get up, Joshua. This is going to be things that we're, 
we're, we're going to have to have an investigation, meaning that we're going to have to have to have to have some people to own up to yeah. some things that have been here. Yeah. Yeah. Israel has sinned, Joshua. I don't know about this, but it's, it's stirring me because he's talking about Israel has sinned, but only one man did it. Right. God help us to love one another enough to realize that I can't do anything but a daddy because I don't want her, your family to be lost. Yeah. Brother Seth, your family is so valuable to me that I don't want to conceal anything in my life that could possibly affect you. Yes. Sister Diane Wood, I know you love the Lord. You would never do anything over here that would help, that would hurt Sister Rachel and her family. Can, can you get the picture of what God's showing us? This is why we're better together. We're stronger together. Israel has sinned. They have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. For they have taken some of the accused things and they both stole and deceived. And they have also put in, it, it amongst their own stuff. You're not going to hide it amongst the stuff. God called you and I out from the stuff. You can't stay amongst the stuff. The stuff is what God called you out of. So why do you want to take the stuff and put it back in? Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before the, their enemies. But they turned their backs before their enemies because they have become uh, doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore. Unless you destroy the accused from among you. Get up. Sanctify the people. And say, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. Because thus said the Lord God of Israel. There is an accused thing in your midst. O Israel, you cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accused, the cursed thing from among you. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned, and the Lord God of Israel, and this is what I have done. When I saw amongst the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, why was it so, amen, so wrong for him to have this beautiful garment? It was because of what the garment represented. It was the very thing that God, amen, was trying to destroy, amen, was this, the, the spirit of the gods that were completely against him. A simple little Babylonian garment, Genesis 3 and 6, remember, amen, what got Eve in trouble. And when she saw that the tree, and it was pleasant to the eye, here we find that now from a garden, the same trickery, the same things that the enemy used to beguile Eve has now worked its way into the camp of Israel. And we find a man by the name of Achan where he saw something that was appeasing to the eye. 200 shekels, amen, that was there with the garment, the silver, the wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels. I coveted them, and I took them. And there they are. They're hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent with the silver under it. Oh, God, help us not to conceal things when our families will be affected because of it. Paul gives a simple formula how to follow and what we must do. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. He simply begins to give you and I the understanding that we can eradicate, fix, we can uncover, we can un 
conceal them. We can deal with it for once and for all. Brother and sister, listen to pastor. I'm not here to bash anybody here today. But I'm trying to tell you through the Holy Ghost that there is a revival. But for revival to be released, we must get some things. Amen. Because the same God that never changes uh, is still standing with us here today. And here is what he said. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, uh, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Uh, Amen. You and I might not know the reason behind why people we love so much and that we even cover them day after day in prayer and they do the things that they do. Amen. Can I just tell you, we've got to make sure that we find the concealed things. Peter denied Jesus three times, even after Jesus told him that he would. Judas, who was chosen to follow Jesus, betrayed him. Uh, for 30 pieces of silver. Both sin, but only one of them choose to humble himself in repentance. Jesus loved them equally. There was not one that he loved the more. Amen? Amen. It's not that Jesus does not love us. And it's not because that Jesus does not want to save us. Because he gives every one of us a chance and opportunity to repent of our sins. Jesus loved them equally with God gives everyone the free will to choose for themselves. Whom will you serve? Proverbs 28 and 13. He went on to say, he that coveth his, his sins shall not prosper. But whosoever confess and forsaketh them shall have mercy. I don't know about you, but I need more mercy of God every day of my life. Why would anybody want to die in their sins when when you really don't do you do not have to? First John two, first John chapter two and verse one. He says, My little children, I write you these things so that you may not violate God's law and sin. But who will, if anyone should sin, we have an advocate, amen, one who will intercede for us. That's what that advocate means. I'm grateful that I have a heavenly father that will help me and that will, matter of fact, it was, it was Peter. He said, Peter, the Lord has prayed for you that your faith uh, fail you not. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that I have a heavenly father that's watching over me and you. Amen, that he's there to help us, to guide us, to lead us. And if he did it for Peter, friend, trust me, Jesus is praying for you today. Jesus, Sister Candy, is praying for you. Hallelujah. Well, if you got the master praying for you, amen. And we, 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 we know that God will give us the strength. Jesus Christ, the righteous, just, and he's just, amen, who conforms to the Father will uh, in every uh, purpose through thought and action. I'm grateful that we have a relationship with this God who never changes. Isaiah 55 and 6 and 7, he says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Today, I believe God's going to give us an opportunity. And what I feel in the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you, I came here, I mean, yesterday with a with a a, a, a a word in my spirit from this conference. And I will share it with you here in just a few moments. And I'm coming today to tell you that what God told me to preach on the main service here just a little while goes hand in hand. And what he is trying to get us to uncover right now. I believe this with all my heart. If you are here today, sir, ma'am, there is a going to be a great deliverance that God is going to send into this auditorium today. And you may have been fighting some things and did not know why and where is all this coming from. 
But God's going to give you and I an opportunity, amen, to come before his throne today. Amen. amen. And we will leave here in a different way. Amen. So these scriptures that we have read to you this morning, we find were from Achan, from, from uh, Adam there in the garden. It calls for a personal um, a, a confession. It calls for a personal response in our walk, in our relationship with God. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So I can tell you today, every one of us, including the guy behind this little stand this morning, needs to find a place and say, Lord, forgive me. One of the things I've done or things I didn't even know that I did, God, please forgive me. God woke me up at 5 o'clock this morning. Amen. And I laid there in the bed and I... I couldn't lay there any longer, and I got up, and I went down and fixed a pot of coffee, and I got out on the front porch, and I began to have a little talk with Jesus. And the Holy Ghost fell on my front porch as the rain was falling. The thunder was right, uh, uh, clapping, amen, and the lightning was flashing. But I felt the sweet presence of the Almighty God, uh, and I felt that God will be in a mighty way in this service today. Amen. And God wants you and I, amen, to remove anything that's stopping him from being released into every portion of our lives. Amen. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye on him while he is near. Amen. Joshua said, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Are you going to serve the fathers of your past? Or will you serve the God and, and where we're going? Adam responded to the voice of God and he began to take personal responsibility for what he had done. In verse 10 it says, uh, so he said, I, hear, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Adam, for, for the first time, takes responsibility for his own mistake. And he said, who told you that you were naked? As I said last year, they, for the first time after biting the fruit, we understand that they found themselves naked. Because, friend of mine, you and I are naked without the covering of God's presence. For the first time, God's presence had been removed. And now they saw themselves, and if we're not careful, the things that covered us spiritually will have to take things of the world and now have to make clothing and have to clothe ourselves. What their eyes were open was that they were now naked because the presence of God had then, then been removed. I believe as long as we are in obedience, obedience to God's word, we will always have a covering of God upon us. Isaiah 43, 10 and 11. Here's what it says, and I'm coming to a close. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may consider and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there is no God. There was not one God formed before me, is what God said, and after me, there will, and, and after me, none will come. So you don't have to look before me, you don't have to look after me. I'm still the same one. I'm still He who was, who is, and is to come. Verse 11, I, yes, I am the Lord, and there is no Savior but me. Isaiah 46, 44 and 6, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and uh, his Redeemer of the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Isaiah 44 and 8, Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time and have not declared it? 
ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. It's no wonder why David began to take the word of God and hide it within him. Because David even understood the revelation through this lesson. We know that God, his word, and Jesus, they are one and the same. David knew that if I can get God, the word, if I can get down in the fiber of my being, then there will always be an eternal compass that will never allow me to be led astray by every wind of doctrine that will ever come. Any circumstances that is contrary to the will of God, it will not allow me to get my hands involved in things that is displeasing unto my God. Amen. If you want to know him, brothers and sisters, then you need to get into his word. I said it on Wednesday night that if you would braid, amen, your mind, your heart, and your soul, and you would braid that with the word of the Lord, then in these very three vital places, the mind, the heart, amen, and your soul, I can tell you that you will be protected by anything that the devil would try to send in your life. God is a still faithful God. I believe with every fiber of my being that you will make heaven your eternal home whenever you are able to live according and abide by this wonderful book called the Bible. Amen. We understand that this word and God are yet are, are still one and the same. And he is the God that never changes and his word will never change. Heaven and earth will pass away. But his word will never pass away. If you and I are going to stand before the judgment seat of the Lord, and the Bible says and the books were open, and then another book was open, what are those books? I believe with every fiber of my spirit, God will take us through scripture, and we will determine whether our life lived up according in obedience to the God that never changed. I want to end with this today, amen, on this final uh, uh, eight-part series of the God that never changes. I wanted to end it on this, Micah uh, 3, 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Brothers and sisters, I have said it I don't know how many times in these last eight weeks. We will never have the word of God conform to us, but we must learn how to conform to the word of God. If it's going to judge you and I one day, then it's very important that you and I line our lives up according to the word of God. If there's anything that's in you today, that maybe you need to make sure that it's not concealed or hid or just shoved in a corner. We all have closets or a drawer in the kitchen somewhere. You don't want nobody opening that drawer. You don't want nobody opening that closet. Because that's where everything goes before company walks in. Amen. I mean, he has what they call the drunk drawer at home. If you ever got in a in a situation, MacGyver could come in there, pull that drawer open, and he could fight off everything from that one drawer because you got everything from a flashlight to a screwdriver, amen, to explosives in there. <laughs> but Benny, you got one of the drawers in your in your house, amen. Well, where's such and such? It's in the drawer. Everything goes to the drawer. I know at my house, amen, I've learned mama likes particular things in a, in a certain drawer. If my keys are missing, go to the drawer. If I lay my wallet down somewhere and I forgot where it is, go to the drawer. Man. So what I'm trying to say, 
we just need to get honest with God. And we just need to allow God, amen, the God that never changes, and allow him to lead us and to guide us so that we can live a life that's holy, pleasing, and acceptable unto the Lord. Church, I don't want to live my life. Here, Pastor, I promise you I'm closing in this thing. I do not want to live my life these 53 years. And however long it is before I stand before the judgment seat of God, only to get there and find out there was a, just two little things, one little thing that I've, I, I forgot that I concealed it and I didn't uncover it and make it right with the Lord. If he's a God that never changes, and his requirements are still the same. Right. And we still have to go to a place of repentance and complete honesty and say, God, and I pray that quite often, Lord, search me. Try me. Know my thoughts. If there be any wicked way in me, Lord, get it out of me. Remove anything that I have concealed yeah. so that I can be right in my standing with you. In Jesus' name, let's stand. I really believe God wants to do something very unique here today. God gave me an incredible word. Amen. Standing in the aisle at men's conference. And I'm going to share that with you today. And I believe God will move if we'll let God move. Great God of heaven, I, I, I thank you for these past eight weeks. Lord, you have led us down a journey. To where, God, you reveal many things, God, to prove to us that you are the God that never changes. never changes. Your requirements never change. Your holiness never changes. Your word never changes. God, we are living in a forevermore changing world. But, God, one thing, God, remains the same is that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And beside you, there is no other God. So, Lord, we're not looking to another. For where else could we go? For you have the words of eternal life. Lord, it was you that found us, and it was you that saved us. So, God, we're going to stay connected, God, and we're going to make sure that nothing's in our house. Lord, that will affect those that are around us and that we love the most. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you.